we unveiled a little plaque down there, just for Mark and myself and Kelly O'Sullivan. He and I unveiled a little plaque. And Barry Connolly was speaking and he, he pointed out the primary role that Rita played in, in getting the American trade union movement, and particularly Lyuna, involved in sponsoring this. And Terry has shown great leadership on the general Irish cause, but particularly in terms of this uh, project. The first meeting, I think, was Sam and Big Harry met, met Rita and they swept her off her feet. And at the end of the meeting, Harry is six foot four. He weighs 24 stone. <laughs> and Rita leaned up to him and said, don't f*** this up. <laughs> I want to especially thank Brendan Brownlee who's here and this is a bittersweet moment. I feel it as a bittersweet moment and I'm sure for the, the, the whole clan there's, there's a poignancy. Rita isn't that long dead so we need to just be conscious of that. But Falsha Awalia, Brendan Arish and and to Perry and to Frances and to Rory, Will Alan and Sean, Neil? Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Mike William, yeah. Mike, Michael Yor. Uh, and then all the Gar Feisty. And Rita had a great pride, as all of us who are uh, honoured to be mamos or dajos in what her grandchildren did. And she used to tell everybody what, what they were at. Is Margaret got here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Michael Yor. And uh, Margaret got Rita put in the jail the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rosina Brown is here, who, who was in Armagh with her. Uh, Anne Murray here somewhere. And lots of other folks. Uh, Don Doyle, who's going to launch this. This is a very, you know, it's just marking something, you know, Kahimage. Of a Kohan Karamak, we are star, or which is Triolus, or our star, Fein, a Ligimich, and Tekiamak. We have to tell our own story. Don't let anybody else write our history. We have to write our own history. We have to tell what our version and our narrative is, and then all the other narratives can be put side by side on the basis of equality with that. So, this is about a very, very wonderful friend and uh, a comrade and I want to thank Don Doyle who is going to launch this little tribute and finally I want to thank Rita O'Hara. Rita Buehas, Rita, or Rita, 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 Rita. I'm slightly shorter than Jerry Ashton, bear with me. Um, Tolusha Oram, Vehan Sean Yu, Shola and Van Jarrig, Lar Galanta, our hail Rita O'Hare. Dog Rita, Lurg Moore in our hail Illig, Augustashi Jacker, a credent Gwil Shimaha, Ochmar Shinain, it's Minika Buin and Shea Norse Winta. I'm delighted to be here today for the launch of Mban Jarek, a really great book and a valuable memento of the life of Rita O'Hare, a fear gale and an Irish patriot. As Rita herself constantly advised, it's vitally important for Republicans to write and speak our history and the deeds of our comrades. Rita was such a big presence in all of our lives, it's hard to believe that she's gone, but she's very often in our thoughts. I have very many fond memories of long dinners in Rita and Brendan's house, and longer conversations, of her getting me into trouble and out of trouble, of cups of tea in Anne's Bakery on Moore Street, of late night phone calls, collecting her father Billy to bring him to Dublin, of political advances and setbacks, regrets, good days and bad days, but a lifetime of memories of an incredible woman. I first met Rita in the late 1980s at a Sinn Féin Ordesh in the Mansion House. I had the misfortune to be standing in a queue between Eddie Fullerton and Rita, uh, full of youthful confidence, speaking against the motion that they were both strongly supporting. It turned out my youthful confidence was badly misplaced. <laughs> we were hammered on the motion. But later in the weekend, Rita came and found me to talk to me, to encourage me, uh, and even though I was obviously hopelessly wrong on what I had said and totally missed the big picture, 
she wanted to talk to me about it and over the next number of years began a lifelong friendship uh, with Rita and Brendan. At the time I was doing a Masters in UCD which because of Rita I have still not finished uh, where I was comparing Irish newspaper coverage of the 1921 treaty negotiations and the Hugh Adams talks and little changed in the Sindhu over the years in case you're interested. Uh, she, I asked Rita if I could interview her, I'd got to know her a little bit at that stage. She agreed but in return asked would I come in and help in the press office for three weeks and in a lifetime has passed uh, over that period. Michael Nolan in the book, it's a great read the book, but Michael Nolan in it has brilliantly and accurately captured what it was like in the press office uh, at the time of momentous change. Conflicts still raging, secret talks, a pathway to peace emerging, and Rita was at the heart of all of that every single day. Throughout her life she was utterly fearless, had an incredible work ethic, she was intelligent and strategic and compassionate, she possessed a fantastic infectious a mischievous sense of humour, and her wit was fierce and acerbic for those who were at the wrong end of it. She didn't suffer fools gladly, but she was incredibly generous in her time, all of the time, in offering advice and words of wisdom, particularly to younger Republicans. And many of our leaders today were directly influenced, mentored, supported, encouraged and inspired by Rita. She was an extraordinary woman in every way. As an IRA volunteer, editor of Unfoblocked, director of publicity, negotiator, and Sinn Féin representative to North America. She excelled in every role that she undertook, but I think she was especially proud of her time in the United States, where Rita was hugely successful in promoting the party and the cause of Irish unity. She forged and nurtured crucially important relationships over a quarter of a century in her work on Capitol Hill with successive administrations, with Irish American organizations and the trade union movement. And she developed lifelong friendships with many people and I'm going to do an awful thing by naming some people, uh, including Terry O'Sullivan, Brian Donoghue, John Samuelson, Deirdre Ferrick, Marty Glennon, Joseph Smith, Todd Allen, Kathleen Curtin, Faye Devlin, Kieran Staunton, and of course Sean and Larry Downs. And I named them all because it was the weird and wonderful thing. I knew them all really well before I ever met one of them, because Rita talked about them all of the time, and we've developed great friendships over the years since then. She had huge respect for the work that they did uh, in Ireland and in America. She was hugely respectful of their commitment to advancing the peace process and the cause of freedom in Ireland, and she spoke about them all of the time. Rita also loved books and poetry and language, and the very living thing of language. And she was very fond of quoting literature and rolling her eyes when we weren't able to quote back. And I want to say one instance, in the late 1990s, I was traveling across the US on holidays and I called into Washington DC to see Rita. Something had happened in the peace process and Rita was on her way to CNN to do an interview. So she bundled me into the taxi alongside her. Driving us was a man from Ghana who had been living in the United States for a number of years. Within minutes, she knew that he'd been an English lecturer back in Ghana. And to her utter delight for the rest of the journey, they quoted Shakespeare over and back to each other. And by the time we reached the CNN studios, she knew everything about his life. And when we got out of the cab, they were showing photographs of their children and grandchildren. <laughs> if you didn't know Rita, you might think, be forgiven for thinking that was exceptional. And it wasn't. There was nothing unique in that experience. That was Rita. She absolutely loved people. Later in life, she developed a real strong draw for the Irish language, hugely influenced by her grandchildren and their involvement in Andram Jarrig. What I didn't expect was this love of Anguilliga would also include a newfound interest in the West Belfast band Kneecap, a bit of a departure from her love of classical music. And she took the greatest of fondness in quoting to me many times over the last year or two uh, a line from one of their songs, Na fucking Eishtla RTE. <laughs> For those who don't understand, ask somebody about it. I think she liked the direct language and it appealed to her and she was fond of the odd curse herself. It was also through Rita that I learned so much about great Republican women, unmanageable revolutionaries like Maura Comerford and Sheila Humphreys, and many more. In March of last year, Rita spoke at an event for Maura Comerford. She reflected that the three women shared well over 100 years of Republican activism between them. She said, I will never forget her or Sheila, and I think about them often, truly extraordinary Republican women. And that's how I think and remember Rita, a truly extraordinary Republican woman. She was unique, she was special, she was a once-off. She was as tough as nails, but the thing that brought everything together for Rita O'Hare, in my opinion, was love. 
love of family, of friends, of country, of people. She cared so deeply about everybody and she very badly wanted to ensure that young people would have a better future free of prejudice, oppression, division and conflict. She was larger than life, an icon of the Republican movement, and she was a partner to Brendan, a mother to Terry, Francis, Rory and Kieran, and granny to her adored grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She was the best friend you could ever have because she told you the truth, always the truth, whether you wanted it or not. She was the most human of revolutionary. She embraced who she was. She was never anybody but herself, and that's a very powerful thing. Because in being herself, Rita O'Hara helped change Ireland. She helped change the direction of the future of our nation. We loved Rita, and she loved all of us. And that's why she never gave in, never gave up, never stopped believing, no matter what she was going through. And today, Republicanism is stronger than ever before, and we're closer to the promise of Irish unity than ever before, because Rita O'Hara made it possible. And what greater legacy can anybody leave? And Ban Jarek is a great tribute to Rita, and I encourage everyone to read it. But I have to say, I am also really looking forward to reading how many more that is published, her uncensored words. Thank you very much. Don, just to get a bit of a bolus, do a couple of Gale Gurney lumps, you know, and Ban Jarrod, Macwell and Ban Rua. On August 3rd, you know, Banra is a red haired woman. This is not about the colour of her hair, this is about the colour of her politics. So it's on Ban Jarrod. And on that note, I just want to welcome Jeremy Corbyn, who's just sneaked in the back. <laughs> I'm going to have um, a, a poem uh, read by Aoife, so please put your hands together. So this is actually a poem that was written by Rita's great-granddaughter Kate, who couldn't be here today, so we stepped in to read it for her. So the poem is called Rita. It's Ian Van Lydra and Van is Crua, to Van Shaw Gahalin, Luna Grua Grua. Then a fear key can we see, a sea in van is clister. When she gyra asim, nor be my cree vrishtu. A s'more on kiling chi, van lan gra, ma anam kara, chuck yarla. Yeah.